Hello everyone, I hope we're all well. Welcome back to the channel and thank you very much for tuning in. Today's video is going to be a very quick one and we're going to be taking a look at flying an ILS approach in the PMDG DC-6. More specifically, we're going to be looking at flying an ILS using the Asobo Garmin GNS430. And I wanted to cover this because I've seen a number of reports of people having difficulty with capturing an ILS with this equipment option, myself included initially. And there's a little bit of a trick to have it capture properly. And uh, it took me a bit of trial and error to get it right. So I wanted to share this with you. It does have some information about it in the manual, uh, but even having read that through, it still took me a good few tries to get it right. So I thought I'd just share this with you and uh, hopefully you find it helpful. I'm not going to cover the basics of flying an ILS here or how to set up for an approach. There is plenty of information about that in the manual. And I'm also going to assume that you're familiar with the DC-6 Gyro Pilot and the GNS-430. This video is really just to show you the process we currently need to use to get the aircraft to fly on the localizer and then start down on the glide slope. As it is a little bit of a workaround at the moment, I believe this is something PMDG are working with a Sobo to get fixed. So this video may be irrelevant if you're watching it a few months down the line. Uh, but this is the procedure we need to use now. All right, let's get into it. So we are going to fly the ILS for runway 15 at Salzburg, which is L-O-W-S. And I have flown over from Innsbruck. So I'll be arriving from the west. Absolutely stunning flight, by the way, if you've not flown between the two locations. Absolutely amazing. You don't get too high up either, so the scenery is just incredible. And like I say, we'll be arriving from the west. And for simplicity's sake in this instance, I'm going to give us a direct in to SBG NDB here rather than flying the full transition. And that's going to set us up on a nice long intercept course for the localizer. I won't go into too much more detail here other than the platform altitude for the approach is 4,000 feet. We can expect to start down on the glide slope at 8 DME OES. And the inbound course is 153 degrees as you can see here, OES obviously being the identifier for the ILS. And the descent angle is the standard three degrees. All right, with that being said, let's jump over to the flight deck and uh, I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so you join me here on the flight deck. We are on our direct two leg, well, I say direct to, um, for some reason, this uh, this GPS, it won't let me do a direct to the uh, NDB we wanted to go to. So I am actually having to just sort of manually track it here and uh, vector ourselves across uh, using the, uh, the NDB uh, raw data here. So that's fine, no problems at all. We're still headed on the same course. We've also got the ILS tuned in preparation on 109.9. And I have also set up our OBS needle for our inbound course of 153. And uh, I've actually since figured out that uh, it, I don't think it actually makes any difference whether you set this course or not for an ILS approach using this equipment. It may make a difference when you're using the Bendix radios, but uh, for this one, it doesn't. And uh, I've just put it in there for completeness anyway. I do it every time. I usually use the Bendix radios anyway. And uh, you can see here in the bottom left, we do have DME indications for the ILS. So uh, we can see that it, we are roughly in range. And uh, what we're going to do now is we'll jump up. In fact, I'll show you the, the gyro pilot setup I've got as well. So at the moment, 
We're in gyro pilot mode because I'm sort of manually tracking this NDB. Normally you would be in localizer mode because I imagine you'd be flying, you know, a GPS route into the airport you're flying at. Maybe you're flying a star or whatever. You'd be on localizer mode. So what you would want to do first of all, as you're setting up for your approach, as you're, you know, as you've turned onto your intercept course now and you want to get set up. So you would then turn to gyro pilot, obviously make sure you're on the correct heading for your intercept course. Once you've done that, then you would come up to the GPS here and press the CDI button and switch yourself over to VLOC here. Now, coming back down here, you'll see that you now have nav and VLOC written in white here on the CDI as opposed to GPS in green. Uh, you should also see indications for the glide slope and the localizer. So you can see a vertical line for the localizer, horizontal for the glide slope. Not sure why this flag shows here. Uh, I don't think it's supposed to, uh, but anyway, we've still got the glide slope indication. So that's fine. And normally I think you would you would just expect that this is more or less set up for the intercept and I think that's how it's supposed to work so once you reach the localizer you would then just turn this to localizer and it should intercept as normal but for this add-on for whatever reason it uh, it doesn't seem to always intercept that's mainly why I wanted to make this video today to kind of show you how to work around that and uh, how to get it to intercept properly. So I'll just run you through the procedure from here uh, very briefly. So once we approach the localizer, uh, we'll obviously start to see these needles move. So you want to basically start this whole process once the needles start moving. Don't really try and do it earlier. It doesn't really seem to uh, to go as well if you, if you wait until, sorry, if you, if you do it a bit earlier. So wait until the needles start moving and in our instance we're going to start to see the localizer move before the glide slope so I'll wait till the localizer needle starts moving in and then I'll switch the gyro pilot to localizer mode and then going to come up here to the GPS and I'm just going to double tap this CDI button so I'm going to change it from GPS mode uh, sorry, from VLOC to GPS and then back to VLOC. And then that should have the aircraft capture the localizer. You should be able to tell that it's worked because the aircraft usually starts banking in towards the localizer more or less immediately. But then we should be flying on the localizer. So this needle will start to come into the center. And then you actually do need to repeat the process again for the glide slope. Except the only difference this time is you'll already be in localizer mode. So once the glide slope starts to come down, you'll then switch over to approach mode on the gyro pilot here. If I can just, just get a bit closer there. So switch it over to approach mode here and then immediately go back up here to the GPS. So obviously it helps if you've got some key binds for various different things. And then just do the same thing again. So double tap the CDI button to switch it back to GPS and then again back to VLOC. And then it should start down the glide slope. And again, you'll be able to tell because it does kind of start down the glide slope quite aggressively. So you'll be able to tell definitely that it's intercepted uh, visually from the way the aircraft's moving. And then that should be it. You should be off down the ILS. So that's going to be the procedure. Uh, we've just got a, a couple of miles here to go before the intercept. So I'm going to get us slowed down a bit. We are a bit fast. And then I'll see you again in uh, a couple of seconds. Okay then, so we can see the airport out there in the distance, so we should start to see the localizer coming in. There we go, the needle's coming in, so straight to localizer and then double tap here on the GPS. And you can see there it's now turning in towards the localizer. So again, just double tap this button as the needle's moving in with the gyro pilot in localizer mode. And that's worked great for us. So we're just now going to wait for the glide slope to start coming down. 
and we're going to do the same thing again. I'm getting the flaps down as well whilst we're doing this. <laughs> so sorry if I uh, kind of reeled that off very quickly. Hopefully that uh, all makes sense to you. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know down in the comments. Uh, but you're basically going to see the same thing again here for the glide slope. So you can see it's being quite lazy to catch up with the localizer as many aircraft do in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But you can see the glide slopes now coming down. So we're going to flick this over to approach mode. And we're just going to give it half a second here for it to just get down just a little bit closer there. Maybe you don't have to always wait this long, but once you get a bit more comfortable with the process, you might be able to just do it a bit earlier. So I'm now going to double tap this back to GPS and then back to VLOC. And then we should... There we go. You can see the descent rating decreasing rather rapidly as it just dips the nose down there. And there we go. We've captured the glide slope and the localizer. So fully established on the ILS now. Uh, probably be good to get flaps 20 out about now, about now, I think. We'll get the flight engineer to run the before landing checks. And that is the procedure more or less complete so once again just to review that once the needles start moving in into localizer mode first of all and then double tap the cdi button here and then once the glide slope starts coming down into approach mode and then double tap the cdi button here i can't stress enough you do need to wait until the needles are actually moving for this to work I remember when I was first trying to figure this out, I I was double tapping it and, and nothing was happening, but it's because I was doing it too early. You need to wait until the needles are moving for it to actually sort of fully, I suppose it kind of wakes it up a bit, wakes up the needles or whatever it's doing in the background and uh, it, it does start uh, start working then. Like I say, it, it's... It's quite obvious when it works because it's uh, it, it visually sort of moves the aircraft quite quite a lot. And that's the procedure. Obviously, you know, from then on, it's just a normal ILS approach. Uh, it should behave as expected. And that is it, really. So I hope that's been helpful for you anyway. That's going to be it for this video. Did want to keep it quite short and sweet. So I hope that's helped some of you guys and you've enjoyed the video let me know down in the comments what you think if you've got any questions by all means drop them down there as well otherwise i'm now going to land this thing <laughs> hopefully i can get a good landing for the video and yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed hit the like button if it's helped you subscribe to the channel if you're not already and you do enjoy this kind of content i stream every week uh, both microsoft flight simulator and uh, x-plane so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.